It's Create Day, steampunk style. Yeah. Okay, so for this project I chose this whiskey bottle that um, is fairly smooth but it does have a little bit of raised lettering on it so I just need to smooth it down a little with some medium grit sandpaper. I'm also going to be using these lock and key molds from Redesign. So the first thing I want to do is get some texture on this glass. It is perfectly smooth. There is no design on it. So I'm going with um, a paper towel that had some texture on it, but I only want to use one ply. So I'm separating it. And then I will be decoupaging that onto the bottle. First I wanted to tear off around the edges so that there are no sharp lines. Just gives it a much more natural look. So now you just go in and apply a coat of Mod Podge on the front of the bottle. Lay down the paper towel and smooth it out. You could also use tissue paper or napkins. It just depends on um, the look that you're trying to achieve. This one I wanted the texture, um, that, like the pattern that was on the paper towel more so than like um, say a wrinkled pattern even though this does have wrinkles in it. I just thought it kind of had more of an industrial look pattern to the paper towel. So that's why I decided to try this. I had not um, decoupage with paper towels before, so I wanted to see how this would turn out. And you just get it all around the edges so that they'll lay down. Just add um, bits and pieces on the sides, like this bottle is pretty skinny, so you just have to kind of piece it together. So I'm just adding in like around the top. Really easy to do. Then once that was all dried, 
I just went in with a coat of Mod Podge over the entire bottle. And now once that was dry, it was time for paint. So I went with a black chalk paint. This will give us our base coat um, and then we can start adding on the molds and all the little gadgets and then do the final paint. Okay, so now it's time to make our clay molds. I'm just putting in some cornstarch to help the clay release easier, and I'm using the DAS um, air dry clay. You just want to get it kind of rolled up and warmed up in your hands, and then press it into the molds, scraping off the excess. And for the most part, it just pops right out depending on the mold. Um, with this particular set, I did have a few problems with the keys. Um, the ones that were really delicate and um, had small details. Some of them broke apart when I tried to get them out. Um, but I just, I went ahead and used them and just glued them together on the bottle. So it was fine. And I ended up making um, some of the molds just using the top of the key as like a, just a little extra accent piece. Um, and there I'm just um, touching up the edges to smooth them down. So now I'm using some tacky glue to apply it to the bottle. Trying to center it the best I can. And just gently press down around all the edges and make sure it's on there. And there's our lock. These <laughs> keys were, um, I'm trying to figure out where I want them, but um, they were not the easiest to work with. So I found the placement I wanted, and now I'm just gluing them on. had one little spot there that wasn't sticking, so I had to gently lift it up and put a little more glue under there. So I just made a few more molds for this, um, the other side of this bottle. And then that had to dry overnight before I could go in and do the other side.
And that one did not turn out, so I did it again. So now I um, found this little, I don't even know what it is. It's like this kind of rubbery knob looking thing that I thought, well, I could hang one of my keys from. Um, I have a bunch of these little vintage keys that I got that I used in my Halloween haunt last year for my um, hotel theme. And um, so I just hot glued the key onto that little whatever it is the little hanger thing um, and set it aside to set up so that now I'm going in with these little uh, jewels I guess is what you would call them um, they have a flat bottom so they're not like round jewels they're um, I can't think of what I'm trying to say but anyway uh, I just figured out where I wanted to put these on the bottle and I'm just hot gluing those into place. And you're not hallucinating, my right hand is um, quite swollen. I got stung by a wasp and had a really bad reaction. So for a couple days, my hand and entire forearm were just swelled up like a balloon. And <clears throat> um, even like just doing this crafting stuff was difficult. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but I couldn't, um, I wanted to practice my drums and I couldn't even grip my stick. My hand was like, it felt like the skin was going to break if I tried to tighten my hand up. I really had a bad reaction for some reason. Okay, so now I've glued on the little key. And um, I found these, I think they're luggage keys that nobody claimed were theirs, so they became mine. And I'm just gluing those on. Starting to add all the hardware now. That one, that one didn't adhere properly, like the, the glue cooled off before I got it on there, so I had to just do another one. And this is the little cork top that is on the bottle. Um, I just wanted to put a few of those little jewel thingies on on that on the edge of that so I wanted I, I'm doing those because I thought maybe it kind of look like rivets once it's done
And now we're just doing more of those on the two bottom sides. Then I just found these random like little washer and <clears throat> a nut. Um, I was I was scrounging through my junk drawer trying to find hardware that I could put on this. It's funny how you have so much stuff, but yet very little of what I had would actually work for this bottle. So I'm just kind of randomly gluing bits and pieces on. And now I need to add a chain. Um, I, I just found this in my stash. Like I don't even know what it went to. It's plastic. It's not like a real gold chain. So I just decided to wrap it around the neck and then drape it down around the molds on the front and back of the bottle. And now you can see my hand is already better. This was probably a couple days later. <laughs> Looks more human now. And now I'm just going to take this green twine and wrap it around the neck of the bottle. Almost up to the top, there's a slight um, lip at the top that I'm going to be using some lace on instead just to give it two different textures on the neck of the bottle. So just with hot glue, just wrapping it around. And here again, that Lazy Susan type thing really comes in handy. And now here I'm just adding a little piece of lace. You can see why this is called the ugly duckling stage. It's kind of funny how it can look this horrible and yet look so amazing when it's done. And this is mostly out of frame. I apologize. Um, I'm just adding on a few extra pieces of hardware. I found some little metal, uh, I think they're like what you would put in a to hold shelves in place like on you know those melamine type bookcases that you can buy um, so I put them at the end of the chain just to kind of finish it off and then this and yeah 
Let's see, that's, oh, and then a eye hook. And now I'm just screwing a, um, or drilling a hole into the top of the <clears throat> cap so that I can add a eye hook into that. Okay, here we go with the paint. Everything's going to get a coat of good old black chalk paint. And this is where the magic starts to happen, like it all comes together once you get the paint on. Once that was dry, I wanted to go in with some green. Um, I ended up mixing these two colors, a hunter and kind of an olive green, um, to get the shade that I wanted. I, I, um, I wanted to have this underlying uh, kind of mossy look underneath the other paint. So I just used a little um, sea sponge and lightly coat it like I didn't put it you know completely into all the cracks and crevices and whatnot but um, any any spots that I thought needed a little bit more I used a regular small paintbrush to touch up and now we get to start with the metallic colors oh just brings it to life. I started with a um, espresso colored gold. And I'm using a very dry brush. There's very little paint, very little paint. Like you lightly tap it in and then um, rub it off on your plate so that there's not much on there. And I ended up using a couple of different size brushes to, in order to get in and around all the hardware, the molds and everything. So, you know, you just don't want to completely cover the whole piece. You just want to, oh, um, it's hard to explain like you just you want coverage but you still want some of the other showing through you want the black you want the green you want it all to be pushed to the back but still showing through on some level and then the next color is brushed bronze. It's a little bit lighter than the espresso and so I'm just dry brushing that over all the molds and the hardware. Now 
there are so many things you can do with these steampunk type bottles. Um, I was really excited to watch this thing come to life and thinking about all the things I could do in the future. I absolutely love it. And just doing it over the um, trim there at the neck and the top. I apologize for my voice. I have allergies. And now I'm going in with the Rub and Buff Antique Gold. Just using my finger to lightly uh, just go over um, highlighting the raised areas. Like you don't want to get this rubbed down into the um, textured base of the bottle. You just want it on the top. Just really brings out all those details and uh, makes all that stuff just really pop. And with that, we are done. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope I've inspired you to go create something. See you next time.